Welcome to the Printing and HP Potty Training video. You will learn a variety of skills including how to print, undo paper jam, and operate the HP Plotter. Let's get started. Students can print from any of the desktop computers in the Computer Center. In addition, we have a web interface that allows customers to print from any laptop by pointing their browser to labprint.uic.edu. From there, you will just select their location KOH, WPH, or South, upload the document, and send it to either the black and white or color printer. Once the print request is sent to the printer, the document name and the customer's USC login name will appear on the printer server screen. Once the document is displayed on the printer server, the student needs to select the document they wish to print out. This document will be highlighted and checkmarked on the left-hand side. Once the proper document is selected, the student must click Pay with USC Card. A box will pop up saying Swipe Card. Once the student has swiped their USC Card, their document will immediately be produced. This has been a tutorial of how to print documents in our computer lab. Next, we will be discussing how to reload paper into the printers. In the cubicle, there should be a barrel key and a drawer that are designated to unlock the printer. You need to use that key to unlock the bracket off the printer. Once that is done, pull out whichever tray is empty. Take off the paper guard and place a new stack of paper into the tray. Once the paper is loaded, replace the paper guard and push the tray back into its right position. As you took the bracket off in the beginning of the video, place it back into the hinges and re-lock the bracket back into place. As busy as computer labs are, sometimes you will encounter paper jams. Next, we will go step by step on how to undo paper jams. When you are trying to resolve paper jams, you must look at the back of the printer and press up on the button on the left side of the back portion of the printer. And the button will make a clicking noise when you have opened it correctly. Once you have opened the first portion of the printer, next you will lift the dark gray button in an upward motion and lower the second portion slowly. That is where the paper jam will most likely be located and you will be able to remove it. When you have taken out the paper jam, replace each portion of the printer in its right position. The environment supports audiovisual technology in 185 classrooms, 20 auditoria, three computing centers, and five instructional computer classrooms in the computing centers. Student technical assistants, also known as STAs, assist LE staff in the computing centers and classrooms within the computing centers. Inventory assistants also help keep our computing centers and offices stocked with a variety of supplies. Student training is offered face-to-face -face at the beginning of each semester, online through Blackboard, and on the job as hands-on training. Completion of all training components is required four weeks after your hire date. In this chart, we have structured which training should be completed within the first, second, second and third, and third and fourth weeks of being hired. We encourage employees to discuss any issues with the coworker immediately. If the issue cannot be resolved at this level, the employee should arrange a meeting with their student lead slash mentor or specialist. If the concern, problem, or issue is not satisfactorily addressed, employees should contact the ITS Human Resources Department. When reporting violation and or complaints, the written report must include the following information. One, the cause for the complaint. Two, the date, time, and location. Three, the name and contact information of the witness. And four, the involved person or persons. Alright, so schedule source. So here's the website. Everyone should try to log on. Schedulesource.net. When, when you're trying to log on, you're not going to use location or enterprise. You are an employee. So use that. Important.
Okay, so when you're trying to log on, you're under employee, your code would be um, where you're assigned, W U K or Sal. Okay? Your username is your USC ID um, your USC ID email address, that's what you're using. The password for those of you that chose your password, enter your password. For those that did not choose the password, your password is I T S T E L. One thing I will tell you as an employee of ITS, you will get a lot of emails. Create a filter. Um, there's a way, I know some of you actually have your email directed over to your Gmail email address. Um, most of you have been assigned there 9 to 12 hours. The maximum hours we were scheduled you for would have been about 15 hours the most. And very few of you have done that. If you want to pick up additional hours, which some of you have um, told us that you want to work 20 hours a week, this is where you would go. You would go in here. Swap board is pretty much where people post their shifts if they're not um, going to be around that day. It's your job to find um, coverage for your shift, not our job. So if you cannot make it in for a day, I don't want to see an email from you saying, hey, Angie, I'm sick. I can't come to work today. Sorry. I don't want Stephanie to get an email from you either. We put you on the schedule. We're in charge of making sure that the Shifts are covered, but it's just your job to make sure there's coverage. And you need to notify someone if you're not going to be making it in. And I'm pretty sure that you guys covered how to email. If you're gonna, if you're not going to be in the office and you're going to email at least students and tell all of the 150 employees that we have, hey, I can't make it to my shift. The shift is on swap board. Somebody please cover this shift. Put from whichever projector you choose. So if you're listening to the left projector, whatever video image is showing on the left projector is what you'll hear in the room. Similarly, whatever you, when you choose to listen on the right button, whatever image is being projected on the right, the corresponding audio will listen to that. Here we have our preview window, which allows us to choose whether we want, and we've got an option to choose the preview, uh, preview the DVD player or preview the VCR. Right now you can see it says no disc, so we're looking at the DVD player. Press over here and we get blank screen. We also have our little control inside the window. Um, that should be pretty intuitive. Um, only other things in here, you can see our screen control on the left and our screen control on the right. And then we have our volume controls for speech and audio. Now remember, in this auditorium, speech and audio are handled differently. So if you turn up the volume on your program audio, which is the sound coming out of your computer or out of the DVD player, that is a different volume than the volume coming out of the microphone. So if you need to turn up the microphone volume, make sure you're turning up speech volume. If you need to mute the microphone volume, make sure you're muting speech volume. Again, on program volume, you have your mute button here. Program or media volume, again, that refers to just the like media, like if, you're, if it's your laptop that you have plugged in, or the DVD player, or the VCR. And you control it just by moving your finger up and down on the touch panel. Again, speech volume, this is a master speech volume, but, you, but if you want to get in and do granular control, like the wireless mic is too loud and the dedicated podium mic, because there are numerous inputs in here, you would choose mic, the mic control button, which gives you this wired mic control button or panel. You can control the volume of each input individually. So if you're doing a panel discussion and you need a certain volume, a certain place, you would do it here. You can also mute various mics here. Um, mostly you care about the wireless volume, which again is there. So if you're having a problem, you can't, the mic's not working, always make sure to check that there's actually volume coming up on this page. And then you just press close page to get rid of it. Okay, so um, here's the power supply up here for the Netlinks. You can see it's got, it's got power here. A lot of the problems that you'll have come from, though, this device right here. You can kind of see it. This device. This is an Extron SFI. This device is actually controlled by the brain, but it's its own little sub-brain. So if you think of it like a dinosaur, like an old brontosaurus, which had a brain in its head and then a brain actually in its back, and the two would both do different things. That's the same idea here. Um, this sends out the commands to this SFI. There is also 
this device right here, this little black box, this device is actually controlling the locks, the Linnell locks that you control via GVE. So you are able to remotely lock and unlock the lectern. <coughs> this device is the, is the Audia, the Biamp Audia. This device, if you come from an audio background or if you've seen an old mixing board with lots of faders and pots that you can slide and turn, this device does that all digitally for you. So you can tell it to do things from your touch panel or from the brain. So there's a connection from the brain down here to here to the biamp, and it's telling it what to do. So the biamp, um, you can see these black connectors are all outputs, and these green connectors are all inputs. 